Hello and welcome to all the participants in today's session. Uh, I am Raheem Zulfiqar Ali from Excel Basement Private Limited. In today's webinar, we will discuss about Microsoft Excel, very interesting feature that is called Microsoft Excel Pivot Tables. And we will learn some uh, good tips and tricks regarding Pivot Table. And I have created a data set and I will tell you about around seven to eight techniques of uh, making a good summarized reports from your data. So if you are very new to my webinars, uh, what you can do is after the session, uh, you can access all our content on our YouTube channel that is Excel Basement Private Limited, where you will find a lot of videos on basic to advanced Excel, Microsoft Power BI. Uh, we have also conducted a lot of webinars in this COVID pandemic time period. So you will find a list of awesome webinars here. Uh, we are also creating some specialized courses just like data visualizations with Power BI, uh, Power Query in Excel, and uh, we have also created a new series that is called 60 Seconds Learning. So I hope that after webinar, uh, you will subscribe to our YouTube channel where you will find a lot of videos that will definitely improve your learning and knowledge. All right, so let me change the screen and uh, I hope now you can all see my Microsoft Excel application window. Kindly, uh, for a quick confirmation, do confirm me about my voice in the screen so that I can start with the pivot. All right, so Let's begin with the with the very basic first that uh, if you don't know what is pivot all about and why do you create in a pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. So let me begin with a conceptual side first so that you can understand this feature easily and, and a lot of uh, employees on their workplace uh, for the reporting purpose, they used to create pivot tables to have quick analytics rather than uh, applying a complex formula in that particular situation. So we are discussing about the pivot table and what are, what is actually pivot is all about. So pivot is a verb, which means uh, we will be doing some actions with the data. Okay. So what we are, what we actually do in the pivot tables is we do some actions with the data database, right? And, uh, and and the majority of the time we try to rotate and revolve around the databases. Okay, so this is the very basic about the pivot tables. When you create pivot tables in Excel spreadsheet, uh, definitely the size of the Excel spreadsheets uh, gets increases. So for example, if your database size is approximately 15 MB in Excel spreadsheet, and if you are creating a lot of pivot tables into that Excel workbook. So what you can do is you can, instead of uh, saving that Excel file in an extension that is called .xlsx, you can save it on XLSB that is in the binary format. So if you want to reduce the file size of Excel spreadsheet where when you have a lot of pivots because that increase the size. So you can change the extension of that particular file. Okay. So what actually pivot do for us is that they convert the data into summary reports. And we can do some analytics, not very much advanced analytics, just like we have in the power pivot. But yes, up to some extent level, we can create some standard reports and that can be uh, created in very less time. So instead of uh, investing your time a whole day in, into that required report, you can easily use the, these features in order to make a quick reports for your boss or manager. So now we have a data set here and in this data set, you will find some multiple columns. Uh, let me discuss the data first and uh, after understanding of the data, you will be able to create some uh, summary reports. Okay. All right. So we have uh, the first column here 
which represents uh, the customer names into this column. Then we have different types of products available. Then different salesperson who are selling those products to different customers. Then we have regions that in which particular region that sale has been occurred. Then we have definitely the very most important column of dates. Uh, then we have that amount that that particular amount has been sold on which date and in which particular region. Then we have some uh, date and time frame columns uh, that are year, month and quarter, right? So this is one of the very common databases that I have took for this today's webinar where you can understand the data easily. In your case, if you are working in an HR, comp HR or in finance or marketing side, so you, you also get your business data uh, and that could be having some multiple columns, more than 10, 12, and 25. Uh, and, and we hope that uh, the data is cleaned up because if you get the raw data, uh, the chances are that in the raw data, your data is not cleaned up as much, uh, is possibly ready to make a pivot for that. So it, at the initial step, when you get the data from a data source, uh, you are required to clean that data and there are so many techniques now available. Either you can use the text functions available in Excel. Uh, either if you are an advanced level user, you can use the Power Query uh, to transform your data set and then going for the pivot tables. So we are assuming that uh, our, this data is being nice, ready and clean for the pivot. Now, for the very first time, when you are creating a pivot table, uh, what you are required to do is select the entire data and then go to the insert tab, click on pivot table, okay? So when you click on pivot table, a pop-up window will appear here, create pivot table window, uh, where this window is asking you that, where to create the pivot table, either in a new worksheet or in an existing worksheet, right? So we want a pivot table in a new worksheet. So we will go with the default options available here and we will press okay. So when you press OK, what happens is the next step, Microsoft Excel will insert a new sheet and uh, you will see that sheet contains a pivot table. Now it has two sides, uh, the, the left side, which is uh, definitely a blank and the right side where you have a pivot table field list. Okay, so whatever the columns uh, were there in the data set, you will find all those fields here. And when you drag and drop any of the field into the rel relevant areas, your pivot table gets started uh, developing, okay? So it's very easy process to create a pivot. Uh, let's understand more about it. For example, if we want to see product wise sales, so what I can do is uh, I have a product field here available. So I will drag and drop this field into the rows areas, okay? And I will just drop it. So it's very simple. Uh, with, with the mouse, left click or key of your mouse, drag that field into that relevant section and drop here. So now you can see that uh, there are four products in your data set here. And uh, if, if we want to have the sales number uh, in front of these products, so what we are required to do is, uh, we will drag the sales USD field into the values. So whenever uh, in, in the particular column, you have the numbers such as uh, a sales number or a revenue number or, or any kind of cost, uh, you are required to put or plot that field into the values area so, the, so that you can do some calculations, okay? Uh, whereas there is a choice if you want to see the report into a horizontal view or a vertical view with respect to different dimensions, uh, you are allowed to switch the products from rows to columns. So it will create a different view. So it's entirely depend on the requirements that how you want to see the data. Now, moving ahead one more step, if uh, the manager says to you that, okay, fine, that's, I can see the product wise sales here. Uh, what, what I more need is I want to see year wise sales. So I, so I can analyze better year wise sales. So we have a field here that is called year. So I will just drag this field and I will drop into the columns. So now you can see that uh, on very next moment without applying any formula, your pivot table get expanded column wise, year wise. Okay. So this is a very unique and uh, awesome feature of Microsoft Excel and one of the very, very famous 
uh, pivot tables uh, because it will not let you require to apply many formulas and functions as we do normally in reports. Now what happens is here, if, if you observe it, this pivot table, first uh, the 2013 numbers and 2014 numbers are not, uh, we are not seeing the exact numbers here because the width of the column is not uh, enough to show that into entire big number. So what we can do is we can just expand that column width. Okay, now we can see the numbers clearly. And second thing is that if, if you are required to do the formatting for the numbers, you can select the entire numbers data and go to home tab and click on comma formatting. All right. One thing you can also observe here is that there, there are no sales in the year 2015, which are coming as a blank. And sometimes you don't want blank cells in your pivot tables. So how to fill the blank cells in your pivots. So this is very easy. Let me tell you how to do it. Simply, we will right click on this any blank cell and uh, in this contextual menu, uh, you will find a second last option that is called pivot table options. So I will click on pivot table options. And here you will see a option that is available for empty cells show. So whatever you write here, that will definitely display on the blank cells in the pivot table. So if I want zero to be replaced in this blank cells, so I have written zero here and I will press okay. So now you can see that now these cells are not blank anymore. It's filled with a zero, right? All right, so this was the very basic that how we can create a pivot table in Microsoft Excel. Moving ahead, let's move to another uh, option and exploring that feature that is called slicers in the pivot tables. And now it, it could be possible that most of you uh, already explored slicers, right? Uh, but those of you who are very new to that, how we can do that, uh, let me tell you. So now in this current pivot table, you can see product wise sales and your manager says, I want to see only a specific year sales, for example, 2014 or 15, right? So there is a choice. Either you can drag and drop that year field into filters. So whenever you want to see a particular item from a list of columns, uh, so you drag and drop that field into the filters. So now you can see that on my pivot table on raw number one, it's written year and all. So I can just click on this small arrow and this filter menu will open. So, so I have a choice. If I want to just see 2014 sales, so I will just check mark on that particular item and I will press OK button. So the numbers will get refresh. So later on, if there is any change, for example, now my boss uh, just wants to see 2016. So I can just click on that and I will press OK, right? But if you want another visual display, a different style to filter that context or the data, what you can do is you can insert the slicer and that's very easy. Uh, the first thing is that you, you are required to be in your uh, pivot table. If you are outside your pivot table, that particular option will not be available. So it's mandatory to be inside the pivot table. And uh, when you are inside your pivot table on top right side, you will find two tabs. The first one is analyze. And the second one is design tabs. Now these two tabs only visible when you are inside your pivot table. Okay. So when you go to the analyze tab, you will find in the filters group, there is a feature that is called insert slicer. So when you click on insert slicer, all the fields which are also available on the field list, pivot table field list are also available in the slicers. So we are required to create a slicer only for a one field at this particular time and that is for the years. So I have just check marked the year field and now I will press OK. So now you can see that we have a visual display, very nice visual display and we can just click on any of the year and you can see that this slicer is also working as a visual display and filtering the context, filtering that data and giving us the updated numbers, right? Now, for example, 
if you are required to select more than one year of your specific choice. So what you can do is you can, you are, you can press the control key and click on that particular years. So you can select the multiple uh, years from that slicer, right? So the slicers are very easy. Uh, let me just quickly repeat that. Whenever you are inside your pivot table, uh, you will find a tab on the right side on top that is called analyze and click on insert slicer. So you will find that particular entire list and whatever your slicers are, you can, you want to make just check mark on that. Okay. So for example, if you want to create a month slicer, you have that particular month slicer available, right? Okay. So next part. Uh, as you know that as, as an Excel user, you might have worked previously on Excel charts as well. Uh, and you know that Microsoft Excel charts are uh, useful when you want to have the data visualization and you want to have a decision making. So let's add one visualization object that is called charts. So how to insert a pivot chart uh, so that whenever we select a different year from here, uh, so we can analyze that how our product wise sales are growing. So what we can do is for inserting a pivot chart, again, I will go to the analyze step and I will click on pivot chart. Now in the latest version of Microsoft Excel, such as in 2016, 2019, uh, there is also a feature added that is called recommended pivot tables. So if you don't have any idea that what kind of chart will be best suitable for, for this data set, uh, Microsoft Excel recommended pivot tables suggest you some more pivots. Okay. So that's a recommendations from, from the uh, latest features that it you allows you to examine your data from the different angles. Okay. So for creating a chart, we will click on pivot chart and uh, you will find a lot of different types of categories here. So if you are using any older version, such as 2010 or 2013, you will uh, not find many available charts such as waterfall or funnel charts or box and whisker. Whereas in the latest versions, uh, you will find a lot of awesome categories and new charts available. So for in this webinar, we are just, uh, we are not focusing more on visualizations, whereas we are more focusing on pivot tables. So uh, I will uh, start with a column chart. And uh, now you can see that there is a column chart available on your spreadsheet, right? And now whenever you click on any of the year, so you can see that that particular numbers are also changing from the pivot table and also that visualization is also changing. So you have three objects, right? You have three objects on your spreadsheet. The one is the pivot table. The second one is the slicer and the third one is uh, the chart the there is one more feature where is very interesting uh, that is called timelines so you can also add timelines and remember that in timelines uh, you are only allowed to select the dates column basically timelines only work when you have a date column in your database so if you have a date column in your database so you can uh, insert the timeline as well with your pivot so let me do a quick demonstration for that so what I will do is I will just go again in inside my pivot table and on top right side, I will click on analyze and I will click on insert timeline. So it, it giving me a one field only that is order dates and I will press okay. So now this is one of the very interesting, awesome feature available with the pivots that you can convert that entire timeline into different time periods. So there is a drop down menu at the right side. So when you click on that, so how you want your timeline to be show year wise, quarter wise, month wise, or day wise. So for example, if I want my timeline to show quarters, so I will click on quarter so that you can see that without any formula, your timeline is being now converted into quarters and you can just select that particular quarter or a year. And uh, the numbers are changing from your pivot tables and uh, from the visualizations, right? So this is how, uh, the timeline features is very interesting, right? Okay, so moving towards the next technique is uh, 
I will show you that how to create the report connections in order to make a quick dashboard for your uh, manager or your boss. Uh, and uh, that will be a highly interactive uh, feature. So I hope you will find it very interesting and you will apply after the webinar at your workplace. So how to create a report connections and uh, connect two different pivots so that it could work like a dashboard and with the clicks, uh, whole report will get changed. So the first step will be, uh, you, you have to select your entire pivot, press control C for the copy and you are just required to paste that pivot to up to next some blank column. So I have just uh, copied and pasted that pivot table and I will do some changes here. So instead of uh, products in the second pivot, let me just drag and drop the salesperson. So now I can see the sales salesperson, why? Right? So we have four salesperson, Noordin, Rafiq, Rahim and Salim and uh, they are doing some sales and we can also analyze product wise sales and the salesperson wise sales at the same time. Now in this particular pivot table, I also want to filter according to the month. So I want to get an idea that in which particular month, how much sales has been made by each of the salesperson. So what I can do is I can insert a slicer and that's very easy. I will go to an analyze tab and I will click on insert slicer and here I have a field that is called month. Okay. And I will press okay. So now you can see that you have a visual display of month and a scroll bar to scroll down. If you want to select any month from Jan to December. So when you click on any month, you can see that that entire pivot table get refresh and uh, if, if I want to see sales by salesperson for the month of July, so I, I will just click on July, right? It's very easy. Now, one thing is that how to customize that slicer as well. So if you find out that uh, this, this list is very big and you want to change it into columns, into more columns. So how you can do that. So when you click on slicer, you will find on top right side, a slicer tab where you can customize with the slicers. You can change the format of that slicer, uh, a color backgrounds, right? And the alignments, height and width. But here we want to uh, ex exclude that scroll bar. We want to make that list short. And uh, what we are required to do is increase the number of columns. So by default, definitely the column number is one. So we will increase the number of columns into, for example, three. So now you can see that your vertical list has been converted into uh, more columns and now it's uh, looking uh, very good, neat and clean. Okay. So now when I click on any of the month, that particular pivot is now being refreshed and let's add one visualization to that particular pivot. So I will again go to analyze. I will click on pivot chart and this time I will insert a column chart. And let me change the colors of that particular chart. It's very easy. Uh, you can go to the design tab on top right side and click on change colors. And uh, let me select the red color for that, right? All right, so now we have on our, this spreadsheet, what we have, we have two different sections. For example, this three objects, that is the pivot table on the left side the slicer and that particular chart is entirely a one section, a separate section. Whereas on the right side, we have another different kind of a pivot table, a slicer of month and, and a chart relevant to that particular pivot, second pivot. Okay. Now what we are required to do is to connect these two sections with each other so that it would work like a mini dashboard without any formula. So, for example, if I click on any of the month here, I want that this first pivot and the chart is also get updated with those respected numbers. Whereas if I come to the left side first section, if I click on any of the year, you can see a difference. When I clicking on the year slicer, the entire report gets updated. So my first pivot is also refreshed. My second pivot is also refreshed and also both these visualization. 
now this is particularly because by default uh, pivot tables has their memory cache and uh, when we copy and pasted that second pivot table so the settings has also been connected with that so the connection is already built from the one side and we are required to check that the connections should be made from the both the sides so to create a connection you are required to have a slicer because you you can only create a connection if you have a slicer uh, on that with that particular pivot okay so let me give you a quick demonstration that how you can create connections and join two different pivot tables with each other so that it it could look like a connected report so on this first slicer of the year slicer i will right click on this slicer you will find this contextual menu and here you will find an option that is called report connections so if you are using an older version for example 2010 or 13 um, in that particular version you will find pivot table connections but if you are using excel 2016 and 19 uh, the option that this is called report connections so when you click on report connections so a, a report connection window will appear here and you can find that there are two pivot tables on sheet two pivot table one and pivot table three and both are connected you can see a check mark on both these options right if we go to the second slicer which definitely represent the second pivot table so when i right click on this particular slicer i will go to report connections and now here you will find that one check mark is missing so we are required to click on this check check box okay and i will press okay now what happens is both these two different pivot tables are now connected with each other with the help of slicers so whenever i will click on any of the month you can see that your both pivots get updated right and when i click on any of the year again the both pivot tables and the visualizations get updated so with within very less time uh, we were able to create a dashboard that contains no formula or function and on a different kind of time period the numbers get filtered and you can report it to the further of your manager or any boss uh, you want to so this is how uh, this report connection feature is very interesting uh, which connects your different pivots into one and with one single click uh, your whole report gets updated on on a single click right now let's move to the next tips and tricks regarding the pivot tables so let me quickly select the data and i will click create a new pivot table and now this time let me drag the month field into the rows areas and the sales into the values right now you can see uh, the month wise sales in this particular pivot table right and uh, what if if we want to change this numbers of a different calculation for example we don't want some we want average or we want number of transactions so that's very easy i will just drag and drop the sales field again two times into the pivot and in the second column we are required to get the averages because we can we want to analyze uh, average wise as well so it's very easy right click anywhere on the second column uh, from this contextual menu click on third last option that is called value field settings and instead of sum click on average so you will get average of each of the month for the sales right and in the third column if you want the number of transactions that is the count so right click on it go to value field settings or instead of sum click on count so now in one particular time we are seeing three different numbers in three different columns the first one represent month wise sales right the second one averages and the third one is number of transactions you can also rename the headers because this could not 
looks like a very neat and clean header. So we can just rename it. We, these are averages, these are count, or you can say transactions, right? And this is total, right? Okay, uh, there is one more technique is here that uh, for example, for example, if I want to rename this column as customer. So for example, if I want to rename this column as customer, uh, there is a warning shows here, a message here that pivot table field name already exists. So what does this means? So whatever the names available in the field list, you cannot give a name to that particular column. So there is a limitation. So any of the name which is available here in the right side field list, you cannot give the same name to the any header of that particular column. But we can also do some technique here. If we want, still we want to give the name uh, of this column as a customer. So I can write customer and I will add one space here. And that will definitely Excel will accept it because this customer on the right side field list has no extra spaces. Whereas definitely you can assume that the space would not be seen by the naked eyes. So we have just given the exactly the same name available in the pivot, but with a different technique of adding a space into it. Right. All right. Next technique of uh, or, or tips or tricks you can say about the pivot is for example if I drag order dates into the rows and uh, sales USD in the, into the values. Now you can see that because I am using the latest version here. So this is already in a grouping but if you are using a older version like Excel 2010 or 2013 so by default it will give you a look just like this. So because I have dragged the order dates and there are so many dates in the data set and according to that sales here. So if you want to convert, if you want to convert your uh, date wise data into months, into quarters, into years, so you are uh, not required to create a complex formula or function the pivot tables has the built-in functionality to group that particular dates into different dimensions. So this is very easy. Uh, what you can do is right click on, on any date and uh, in this contextual menu, you will find an option that is called group. So when you click on group, a window will appear here and that automatically detects the starting point and the ending point of dates, minimum and maximum date. And we are just required to click on any of the dimension with respect to the time. So if you want to convert this date wise data into month and also with the quarters. So I have selected month and quarters and I will press OK. So in one click, you can see that your data has been transformed into a different dimension with respect to time, date and time. OK, so you, you got the quarter wise balances. You got the month wise balances as well, right? You can also change this as well later on. For example, I will again right click on any of that particular cell. I will go to group and this time I just want quarters and years. So I will click on quarters and years. So I will press OK and see that without any formula, uh, your data has been transformed into a different dimension uh, that is year wise and quarter wise, right? So that is very easy. One more thing is that you will not find a word of weekly here. So for example, if your requirement is to uh, make a dimension of week weekly. So what you can do is click on days and from here in the number of days, just write seven okay, and press OK. So you will find a different kind of slabs of seven, seven days. So now your this data has been converted into a weekly basis. Okay. So this is very super cool feature of uh, Microsoft Excel pivot tables. You can convert your data into a different dimension, right? All right. So moving towards the next tips and tricks, let me create one more new pivot table. 
and this time i will show you some more good calculations available in the pivot without any formula so what i will do is i will drag the month in the rows and sales usd in the values right and we will do some calculations here we will create uh, two different kind of calculations here so i i want to have two times more sales column in the pivot so i have just drag and drop uh, the pivot that particular field of sales into this pivot table and uh, now in these two columns i will create a different calculation so in the first column i would like to have a calculation of uh, of a difference for example i want to have a calculation current month minus previous month okay so how to do that so so that my column gives me a number of a difference either the variance would be in a positive or a negative because we will be subtracting the current month amount from the previous month amount okay so how are we going to do that in pivots that's very easy you have to right click on that particular column you want and then you have to click on value field settings okay so the value field settings win window will appear on the second tab that is called show values as click on that and definitely there is no calculation so we are required to select the calculation from this drop down menu and from here we will select difference from okay and uh, when you click on difference from you will find a column that is called base item so here you are required to click on previous so when you click on previous your entire column gets a calculation of current month minus previous month if you select any other month for example july so your each of the month will subtract from the base month that is called july so there are different kind of situations can come Uh, but in this example the base item would be previous so that every current month get subtracted from the previous month okay when i will press okay so you will get that uh, uh, a column which gives you a variance either in positive or negative right and uh, if you want to have negative numbers to be show with a red color and with brown brackets as we do in the financial reports so that is very easy again right click go to value field settings click on number format which is on the bottom left side of this window so when you click on number format you will find a format cells window here go to the number and select the format you want if you don't want any decimal make it zero select the red color with the round brackets and press okay so now you can see that we have got a column we have got a calculation column uh, which is based on current month minus previous month right the next calculation we will do in the third column that is called the running total how to create a running total so the running total means that if i am standing on the month of february this means that all the previous month will get added in that particular column so if i am on april so the balance of april with respect to all the previous month jan feb and march would get together and this will create a running total okay so how to create a running total column right click go to value field settings click on show values as and from this drop down menu click on running total in okay and press okay so now you get all the balances month wise which are the running total and you can see that uh, in the month of december the running total is exactly the same of the sum of sales right so this is how we can verify the number that th these running totals are exactly correct right and let me change the heading as well so i showed you two different kind of uh, calculations which are available in the pivot there are many more calculations available after the webinar you can go to this feature and you can explore by your own and there are some fantastic built in calculations available okay so i hope that will give you a benefit in future when you creating a reports and and pivots 
Okay, let's come to the next uh, technique of or a trick regarding the pivot tables. So for example, let me just copy some of the data and paste it on a new sheet. Now here in this particular sheet, you will find a small data. And uh, I would like to make a pivot of this particular data. So I will just uh, select that entire data set. I will go to insert tab and I will click on pivot table. Okay. And let me just quickly drag and drop the field. For example, product and the sum of that particular product. Okay. Now what happens is later on, on the weekly basis or a monthly basis, your data gets increased. Okay, your data get appended. So for, for example, if a new transaction comes uh, next week or a next day or a next month, whatever the time is. So a new transaction comes of, uh, for example, 1 million. Okay, and when you go back to your previous pivot and you will right click and click on refresh, that number is not getting updated. So this is the limitation and what you are required to do is whenever in, in the scenario where, where you have data is increasing with the passage of time and when you want your pivot to be updated. So what you can do is you have to go to analyze tab. Okay. And uh, click on change data source. Right. So here you have to manually increase the range. Okay. So every time when your data gets appended, uh, you are required to go to change data source option available in the analyze tab and you are required to increase the range because now we have more transactions in our data and when you press ok so now you can see that your number of sales has been updated now i don't want to do it again and again this step because i know that on a weekly basis my data will get increases with the passage of time and i don't want every time to uh, my pivot to go to manually on change data source. Now, how to control that? So let me give you a quick tip of that. Once you have the data before creating a pivot table, convert that range into a table format. And that table will give you a flexibility of not manually updating the change data source. Okay. So when you convert your normal range into a table format, it converts into a structured references and definitely with the passage of time with more transactions get added into your data. Uh, you are not required to change data source again and again. So let me show you quickly, select the data, go to insert and don't create pivot table at the start. First convert this range into table. So I will click on table and I will press OK. Right. So once your normal range has been converted into a table format, now you will go to the insert tab and click on pivot table and create a pivot table. Now let me quickly drag and drop the fields. Right. So now you can see that there is a one product of soft drinks and we have uh, 1.2 million of sales. Now, for example, later on, if there is one more transaction added to your data, Let's make it 2 million and let's get back to the pivot. So now I know that my data has been increased and I want to refresh this pivot. So I will right click on it and I will click on refresh. So you can see that your number is now being updated instead of going to the analyze and then going to the change data source every time. So now you explore that if your normal data is converted into a range or table format, you are not longer required to use this option. You, you are just required to refresh and your numbers get updated, right? So I hope you like this technique as well, right? All right. So let me create one more pivot table and uh, Let me show you some of the built in features available in the pivot table. So I will just drag and drop the products into the pivots and then also one more field of salesperson. 
I want to see the sales year wise. So I will drag year into the columns and uh, definitely the last is we want the number. So I will drag and drop the sales into the pivot. So you can see that how easy and flexible this feature of Microsoft Excel that is pivot tables uh, that give you a very quick reports based on your data sets. But if you already know a function just like sum ifs and count ifs, then you you want to have uh, invest that time in building that formulas. But in the pivot tables, it will give you a quick report with the different dimensions as you like. Okay. All right. So here in this pivot table, you can see some totals. So we have four different products, bottles, ice cubes, soft drinks, tonic, and uh, all four salespersons are selling all those products in different years. Right, and they have contributed in generating a revenue for that company. Uh, for example, if we want the totals not at the top onto some different locations, or for the time being, we are required to not to show the totals. What what we can do that? Okay. So you have a tab on the right side that is called Design tab. So for for exploring these tabs, as I told you earlier, that if you are uh, on your spreadsheet, but not on your pivot table, you will not get all those tabs on the top right side. What you are required to do is make sure that you are presented in inside your pivot table and go to the design tab. And now here you have a field that is called subtotals and the grand totals. You can also see there is a column of grand total coming here, right? And also at the bottom as well. So for the time being, if you don't want to have these grand total columns, so you are not required to hide that column. There is a simple technique that you can turn off that grand totals and subtotals from here. So for example, uh, I will click on grand total, then I will click on off for rows and columns. And if you want to just offer any particular column or rows, you can go for these options as well, right? And for the subtotals, if you want to see the subtotals at the bottom of each of the group. So you can click on show all subtotals at bottom of the group. So now you can see that instead of top uh, in front of that particular product name, now you have a different raw added and you will find uh, that particular sum of each of the salesperson at, at the bottom. So these features are already available here. You can just click and uh, if you want to hide, then you can select do not show subtotals. The subtotals are not showing with each of the product. And if you want to show, you can select the location as well. So this is very easy, right? But if, if you can imagine if you are creating a report, not the pivot table, so you are manually required to insert a new row and then uh, apply the sum function in each of the uh, product manually. But in the pivot tables, it's very easy. Uh, you have to just click on a uh, few options that is available, right? So I hope you love all these tips and tricks in today's session uh, with respect to the pivot tables, right? What else we, we have uh, available here is, for example, when you click outside of any of the cell here, uh, you will not find a field list, but whenever you come inside again in your pivot, you will find the field list here. But what happens sometimes is that if I intentionally or unintentionally click on this cross button, close button. So when you are inside your pivot table, you will not find field list here still. So don't worry about that. If, if you don't find field list here, go to the analyze tab and click on field list, which is available on this ribbon on the very right side. Okay. So when you click on that, the field list will appear again. Right. All right. So these are some of the features uh, which are available uh, with the pivot table. So there is much more to learn in this. Uh, I hope that uh, in this short webinar of one hour, uh, you have explored so many things about the pivot tables. Uh, now we are proceeding towards the and answers.